Um, sorry. Um, I'm normally forgetting this time of year. I have for the last six years. This year is the first time I want to remember. And I want to remember because my pitch up. Watched a really cool infinite diving waters on YouTube and um, it's talking about signs and signals and synchronization and I've just had the most shittiest day beforehand. Almost about to go back on autopilot and depressed mood and everything. It's my shit again. Till I saw him and um, he said so many things that opened my mind again. Um, he said to do what you do best. And my cousin did art. <laughs> I'm good at sharing ideas. bit emotional at the moment because it's such a great idea. <laughs> and um, it's just beautiful. Um, this guy I've never seen before, but I feel him. I started these blogs because I wanted everybody to sort of know my life without writing a book. I'm lazy and I hate books. I love, love to hate them. I just can't see them very clearly anymore. I don't know what I'd put into a book. I had a publisher call me today and he said that he would um, suggest starting on a bloodline. My family's bloodline. So he goes do that. Um, my great grandmother was born in like 1910, and um, Cecilia, or Cecily, Ainscliffe, and Jeb. Back then, she was born. Over the time span, they had um, 12 children. My nan is one of them, Margaret Dawn Khan. Was with Robin. And she had nine children, which was my nan and my mum, Catherine Joy Bridget Khan. Catherine Joy Khan. And um, my dad's side, they came over from a boat when he was little in Scotland, Dundee. Small our family. But they got strong Navy upbringings, which has helped me through this a lot. It brings up the red flags, or any flag colour, doesn't matter what. If you feel a red flag, you have military, navy, people watching your back. It's good to have that. And um, back to my mum's side. We own a lot of land that is heritage. I remember my nan telling me stories when I was a little girl about. All the land and the wine being used to have Martin Bateman and and um, I was seven years old the last time I remember being proud of all the land we had and then um, I don't know I got to about age 11 where I have a fading memory of going out dirt bike riding with my mum and my dad and my grandfather and my sister 
It was really funny because my godfather turned around and said, hey, what's this money? Did the money in the back, lift it up like that. And my mum went to chase it because it was going into his dad's car and that was really funny. My mum fell into a pile of cow dung almost by about that much on her face. I saw a brown snake when I was on the back of my bike with my dad. I'll never forget it. And then I remember the family having a big fight. Um, and then not long after that, they put the wind turbine up the solid, big solid. And that's not our land anymore, that bit, I guess. But we got more. Um, so that's the bloodline. We can go back ten generations, I think, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to wear certain cool colours. You know, style them as a beach bum. Um, I was born in Canberra and lived here until I was 12, living in my sister's shadow. I couldn't do that much longer. And my mum didn't want me to see that. I was really lucky. My mum, she knew the world that we were going to go into and back then all the parents stayed together. And my mum was sort of the first mum out of the street that left. It was the beginning of a fad. I was 12 and we went up to the Sunshine Coast and I'll never forget the happiness that I got shown by Darren. My stepdad is the better man than all my family put together. Uh, I remember being a troublemaker for him. I remember being a metal militia at 16. So 16 is when it started. I got off the bus and I was at school, it was a school bus. And these chicks that were, I used to sell cigarettes to, they were paying out this chick that was new. They were calling her biscuit nipples because she had really big boobs. And I just, she was beautiful, but she didn't deserve that. So I went up and I whispered to her later on, I think. I think it was at the same time or later on, I don't know, I can't remember. But I remember being alone with her and I said to her, I said, they're only jealous because yours are so big and natural. It doesn't matter about the biscuit nibble, that's why they said it. From that day, me and Marianne, we had the best friendship. She's still there with me by my side. I can feel her even though she's in Melbourne and I'm in camp. Um, she was the one that could remember everyone's names because I'm bad with names and she could remember all the songs and the music and um, we had another friend Toy Shop and she knew all the bad guys all the guys that could get you in the clubs but they didn't like Toy Shop without the three of us so we started getting in the clubs in the early ages. The lads would come up with, the pretty boy lads, uh, would come up with fake IDs, I don't know. And we knew the security at the door, you know. Kind of. The beginning. By then, when I was turned 18, I didn't want to party in the clubs really because I was a nuisance to the security and um, I was more of an embarrassment by the end of it. So I stopped hanging around my friends because I wanted them to always be there for me. And I know what a friend is worth. 
I mean, you can't replace them. So I chose to lose a lot. And I started hanging out with these girls. And their boyfriends, you know, they could get everything. And they used to just get us drunk all the time. Or we would just willingly take pills and move all their drugs or advertise their drugs for them. Because we were a good advertisement crew, Mary and Natasha. A lot of slogans and a lot of slangs and a lot of catchphrases caught on 10 years later. We didn't start them. But we had the honour in sharing them. And that's better than any payment, knowing that you contributed to something that's as big as an owl on advertising for a dad with Alzheimer's. And came up sponsoring the bread. And it's um, it's as big as Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> Nintendo or PlayStation. Um, but it's not bad. It's as beautiful as you could ever see. Not united, but synchronicity, like this guy was saying before. I don't know. They've sort of become my family a little bit more early years. That's why I'm still lost and I can't feel home anymore because there's just too many copies out there. Too many copies that I feel like bad about following one of them. I don't know, so let's go back to I don't know, I got up to about 19 uh, It was bad by then and my mum found out I was using drugs so she put me into rehab I was 18 I left Queensland when I was 19 and came down to Canberra because I would have lost a lot for my family. I chose to do that. What I had. Or one day if I had ever decided to value it. And not lose it. Because my dad always told me why well, start something if you're going to be half assed about it. This is why I've taken so long to start. I'm ready to start talking about this stuff. I'm only ready to start talking about it. In my mind, I still subconsciously just upload a new movie each time. Because if I saved it, I don't think I'd put it up with fears of embarrassment and society. Going back to infinity. And for the first time in my life, instead of triple numbers everywhere, I'm seeing numbers in one photo. The same. Five threes. That's pretty magic. I wonder what it's gonna be like when I meet him. Every day is a new day. I miss being a happy hour either instead of a bad one or even one that doesn't care so I'm going to voice this out to all the other advertisers like me we don't have a label we pretended that there were labels to make people feel special about people that went ultimate 
well, after years and years and years, they can't be ultimate, otherwise they would be so fun like we are right now. Winky, winky, bum, boo, boo, titty, titty. Well, I You are pretty Who needs the good old days when you can just sleep in every day and New Year? Each day is a new year. Like each day is a new year. I'm gonna go now. Um, sorry I haven't spoken um, for a long time. This is just a quiz I did it for my sharing of my application. The team's application, just give them that credit. <laughs> because I'm gonna be cool as Mark Zuckerberg and share it for free. And you heard it here first on YouTube. <laughs> Let's make the pyramid scheme go last, I guess, and if it is real and foolproof, then it should self self sustain on self of itself without destructing. If not, I think I've just distracted a multi-millionaire business by mistake. I didn't even mean to. It wasn't my fault. Evolution, I didn't encounter for that shit when I manifested at 19. Didn't think that we had applications as cool like this shit now. This application shit is beautiful. Whoever invented Shazam is cool. That's when I first started wanting to make an application when Shazam came out. So I started thinking of ideas for an application. <laughs> Manifesting how that does work. So now I'm going to manifest right now what I really, truly, deeply want. <sighs> Rebecca, I want you to love yourself. I love you, Rebecca. And that's what you need. And not only that, We'll get your love heart shaped, darling. It's already there. It's been there for a while. I just haven't been ready. I don't feel ready to go home yet. But I'm too scared to stay here right now. For fear of getting worse and not better. Shaved Island is ready for me. If not, it'll be a lot worse when I come to get one. Because one of those are mine. When I was 12, I googled Love Heart Shaved Island and then only three popped up and they were near Fiji somewhere. And now I'm 27, I googled it and I just asked Google. And now they're 13 and God free. Owned one of them. Make peace island. I'm coming for you. Daydream island. And that pink salt lake in the middle of the island. That's mine. If not, I'm going to nature reserve it. Heritage list it. So no one else can have it except me. Um, I'm really enjoying life and society ruins what is going on in my life and my mind to make it seem bad or shunned upon and all I know is it's not so fuck you society it's just accepting yourself for who you are and knowing that you're not going to change because you're comfortable with yourself. And all I know is that being comfortable is priceless. It's something I would give, not ever give up for anything. 
And so I put two sacrifices in the short run, but in the long run I pay it off. And now I got my real friends. They were there all along. I was waiting for me to be right. Well, that's not how you say it. I was waiting for me to be right. They were just probably going crazy watching me bashing their heads against the wall saying, right there, come on. But I just wasn't happy. I was starting to find my inner soul back in them. I'm starting to feel ready to share my videos. Not all of them. I can't wait to up to number six now, that's pretty cool. It's past the um, hump of making the video. And now they're getting easier to make, they're longer in time. But I'd like to share them to see if. Only some voice back. You know, some reviews and see what they like or what they don't like. So that I cannot do it in the next ones. I wonder whether I can um, emotionally deal with put downs, but they're actually fixing because I know that I need to fine tune this sharing it online of YouTubing very quickly. And yeah, I don't want to be like all the rest. <sighs> so I'm not like all the rest. I never have been. And I always stand out from the rest. It's worth being different. Just for everybody to remember your name. Even if you don't remember theirs. Peace out.